In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly why I believe it is critical for small businesses to keep proper records in the next couple of years. A person in South Africa needs to contribute extra 100,000 rand just to get our balance to float, and that is a lot of money. But funny, the receiver of revenue knows exactly how much money goes into your bank account every month, your bank account. So if you're going to say in your financial statement, you only got 100,000 rand and such, get your bank statement from the bank and they see there's a million rand that went through, they're going to come knocking on your door and say, listen buddy, where is the other money? Because with companies, if they can get it right to disallow three times more expenses than what they would normally do, you can see that they can generate 650 billion rand more just out of company tax. You see this one says, supporting documents for all expenses claims against business income. So Good day, my name is Heinrich Rubier and I'm a professional accountant. I've been in the accounting industry since 2008 and over the years I've helped many, many different companies uh, with their tax affairs. Um, so remember to subscribe to my channel, to like the video as well, and then let me go down to my computer then I'll show you exactly what I've come across lately that I think, that I know that is going to be critical for the survival of small businesses in the next couple of years. Let me get down to my computer then I'll show you what I've managed to find out. So the chat that I want to have to you, with you guys today is why proper record keeping is critical for small businesses in the next few years. Um, I said that Africa is in trouble, um, small businesses are going to be the target. And um, I want to show you guys a video that I watched the other day and I took certain extracts out of the video which I first want to start off with just as a basis for what I want to explain to you regarding the talk that I want to do. Let's have a quick look at the video roughly 50 billion uh, rand a month more than we receive in revenues. We're spending 2 billion rand more every day than we get in income. It all adds up, we get to a hole that government has uh, got at the moment between 700 and uh, 10 billion, which they are hoping for, for the year. But many economists are now looking closer to 800 billion for the year. We're going to have to cut back somewhere and tax higher so, and we're already a high tax country. Yeah. So we are in very, very deep trouble in the next few years. So that is a video that a guy brought out or an interview that they had with a guy, with a guy called Mike Schusler. And that was the interview on ENCA. So he's one of the top economists in South Africa. And um, if you look at some of the figures he was mentioning there, he said that South Africa is spending 2 billion rand a day more than what we are getting in. And government predicts a 710 billion rand shortfall for the current financial year. And economists are predicting 800 billion shortfall for the year. So economists are actually predicting a bit bigger shortfall than what government is predicting. So let's um, look quickly what the regional budget said. You can see for 2021, they said that the original one that they brought out in February showed over there that the revenue was projected to be 1.58 trillion rand or 29% and the expenditure was projected to be 1.95 trillion rand. So that's a huge amount of figures. So let's maybe bring it down to, 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 to terms that we maybe know. So if you look at the originally what they said, as let's say for instance they said South Africa was going to get in 16,000 rand, 1.58 trillion. So let's call it 15,800 rand in salary. And our expenses was going to be 19,500 rand. So just because of that, you can see that they said originally there was going to be a 300 billion rand shortfall plus minus. Now you can see in June, there was a revised budget that they brought out. <clears throat> so you can see gross tax revenue collected during the first two months was 142 billion compared to an initial forecast for the same period of 177 billion rand. Put another way, there's already 35 billion rand behind on our target. So the consequence, the gross tax revenue for 2021 is revised down from 1.43 billion rand, no trillion rand, to 1.12 trillion. So it means that that salary that we were talking about now of about 15,800 15, rand for the month, they brought it now down to 11,200. So you can see that the, the income dropped quite a bit. And then obviously there's um, an expenditure as well. I think they mentioned it over here that for the first time our expenses would exceed 2 trillion rand. So it's going to be more than 20,000 rand. If you take the 1.12 trillion rand coming in, more than 2 trillion going out. So you can see there's that 800 billion rand deficit. So what does that mean? Because those are very big amounts and why I believe that small businesses are going to be the target for, for them to get the extra money from. 
If you had a quick look, now there's some investigation about our tax base in South Africa. Um, maybe let's just start over here on the right hand side. You can see 800 billion rand. Remember that 1 billion is a thousand million rand, which means that 800 billion rand um, is 8. 800 and then with nine zeros behind it. So that's a lot of money. Quickly look at our tax base. You can see this is a graph that I took from the receiver of revenues website. You can see individuals, there's 21 million registered people, but expected to submit the revenue six and a half million people. So those are actually people that's paying tax. You can see companies as close 990,000 taxpayers or expected to submit the return. And that vendors, there's 450,000. So if you break that, that down or bring it down to smaller amounts. You can see it's about six and a half million individuals, about a million companies, and then about a half a million VAT vendors. So that altogether brings us to about eight million people paying tax in South Africa. So if you look at the 800 billion rent that they were talking about, we've got eight million taxpayers. So it means for every single person in South Africa needs to contribute extra 100,000 rand just to get our balance to float. And that is a lot of money. If you think about every single taxpayer, 8 million people, each has got to contribute 100,000 rand. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Um, so let's quickly have a look over here. So you can see here at the bottom, I said individuals, there's 6.5 million people. You can see they're contributing 493 billion rand. So you can see the average per person is 75,000 rand. Companies, 100,000 companies, 214 billion rand. So you can see they're contributing about 214,000 per company. And then VAT vendors, you can see it contributes about 650,000 rand per VAT vendor. So how can you increase tax revenue? Because we need money. So there's three things, <clears throat> or three, three categories of taxpayers. We have individuals, VAT vendors, and then companies. So individuals, the only way to get more money out of individuals is if you increase your tax rates or disallow expenses. So that is what I'm talking about there. So if, let's say for instance, people submit their returns and they're putting expenses on their returns which are not allowed to be there, then they can disallow certain deductions which means that they would get more tax or increase the tax rates. I know that we've got an election coming up so the chances that they can increase tax rates are very slim. If you look at VAT, you can see if you increase your VAT rate, um, we already had a VAT increase the other day, we took it up to 15%. And you can see for politicians, it's not a very good thing because they're getting a bit of a hiding because of that. Um, the other thing is under declaration of output tax. So that is, let's say, instance, if companies don't declare all their output tax, um, they refund their system so much that these days companies can't do it anymore. I think that is one place where you cannot take chances because, the, funny enough, or not funny, the receiver of revenue knows exactly how much money goes into your bank account every month. So if you're going to say that you only got in 100,000 rent into your business account, where in the meantime you received a, a million rent, then they're going to know that and they're going to start asking questions. Um, and I've seen this in the past as well, that within about a month or two, they actually start phoning people if they haven't submitted their VAT returns because they pick up as it means it's like, I've got a million rent, but there's no VAT return for that period. So they actually start phoning the people up and asking for that. And then you can see the other one is over -de declared input tax. So if you look at how VAT works, is obviously you've got VAT on your sales, VAT on purchases, and then the difference between the two is what you've got to pay over. So if people take chances and they over, it over declare the input tax, then um, that is one place where if such digs around it, but they can maybe score maybe another billion rand or two billion rand out of that. But it's going to take a lot of hard work to get that right. But that is one area there where they might produce a bit of extra tax. And the third one is companies. So with companies, you can either increase your tax rates. Sometimes companies under declare income or they over declare expenses. So again, with the under declaration of income, there's certain limits because as I said just now, SARS knows exactly how much money goes into your bank account. So if you're going to say in your financial statement, you only got 100,000 rand and such get your bank statement from the bank and they see there's a million rand they went through, they're going to come knocking on your door and say, listen buddy, where is the other money? Because you can see that you received a billion million rand, but you're only declaring 100,000 rand. So that door's closed a long time ago already. The other thing is the over declaration of expenses. So let's have a quick look of, of how profits work in a company. So just this is a very simple exercise. You can see I asked for my example, said income of a million rand, expenses, with expenses of 900,000 rand, which will give you a profit of 100,000 rand. So company tax works, you take that multiplied with the tax rate, 
which will give you then 28,000 Rand, which is payable in tax for the company. So what if you disallow certain expenses? Let's say, for instance, we take the same example and we say that the company's turnover was a million Rand, expenses originally was six, 900,000 Rand. Let's say, for instance, they start sticking around and they can get it right to disallow certain expenses. So they will only allow 600,000 rands worth of expenses. That will bring the profit up to 400,000 rands. And now, if you take 400,000 rand, multiply it with 28%, you can see now you can collect 112,000 rand in company tax. So that is three times bigger than the amount originally received. So if we just go back to our first um, calculation that we looked at a bit earlier. So if we go to individuals, let's say, for instance, they can get it right to increase that with 10%. Then you can see that the extra tax that they can collect from individuals would be 49 billion rand. You can see with companies, if they can get it right to disallow three times more expenses than what they would normally do, you can see that they can generate 650 billion rand more just out of company tax. And that is where I think that they're going to start focusing on. As you can see, by increasing with 10% to disallow certain expenses, or maybe it's not looking at invoices, you can see there's extra 32 billion rand. So altogether, they can generate 730 billion rand extra in revenue. So this model one, the one for the companies, is where I've got a nasty suspicion where they're going to start focusing on. So if you look at allowable expenses, I just had a quick look at the income statement. So you can see this is what an expenditure schedule would look, normally look like. You can see you've got accounting fees, advertising, bank charges, cleaning, delivery expenses. So if such can go through this list over here and they can find expenses here that you are claiming that you're not allowed to or not supposed to claim, then they can disallow those expenses and then it means you would need to pay the tax in on those expenses. So, so what it normally looks like, um, or let's before we start digging in the, the way that such works, is if you look at how companies work, um, large companies has got accountants and auditors, so which means that they've got a full-time accountant working for them in the accounts department. They have one or two people doing all the invoices and all the purchases and making sure that every records are nice and accurate over there. And then they still have an auditor that comes from the outside to come and verify that that information, which is on this income statement, actually belongs to the company. That is not like the director's expenses and all the stuff that's inside this income statement medium-sized companies, you'll probably find with them that they've got a full-time accountant, but they don't necessarily can afford auditors or people from the outside to come and have a look at the accounting records to make sure that those figures are accurate. Small companies, so this is where I believe is going to be the soft target. You can see that they only have part-time accountants, so they cannot afford to have an accountant full-time. <clears throat> with small companies, their records get reviewed probably either on a monthly basis, maybe on a quarterly basis, sometimes even on a yearly basis. And the problem with, with that is they cannot pick up errors as they occur. So let's say, for instance, somebody um, sends the information through to me, then sometimes we get that information maybe about a year later. So if they made an error last year, let's say, for instance, in May or June, we only find out about that error this year, so now we need to go and correct all those errors that they made over that period, and that is where I think where the big risk is. So let's quickly have a look at some of the audits, some of the stuff that we started see coming through lately, and this is the reason why I believe that they're actually going to start targeting small businesses. So you can see, um, this is just some extracts of some of the audit requirements that we got. You see this one says, support and documents for all expenses claims against business income. So it means that we submitted a company tax return for a small business and they came back and said that these expenses are VM. They want the proof of all those expenses. Because if they can find something there that's not supposed to be there, it means that they will disallow those expenses and then you have to pay the tax in. Look at this next one over here. You can see over there it says, the following additional information is required for review purposes. They want proof of the legal fees, they want the detailed ledger, or the schedule of the legal fees, explanation of the father's highest entries per the schedule to clarify the nature of legal expenses. So again, there they want to prove whether those expenses are actually related to the business. Supporting proof of the five highest entries. Petrol and oil, they want the detailed ledger, so they want to see every single transaction that made up this amount. You can see over here, do we have fuel on this schedule over here? Petrol and oil, you can see on this income statement that shows 119,000 rand. So they're asking, for every single entry over there, supporting proof of the five bars entries. Rent and related, they want the detailed schedule and the ledger for the rent, 
It's important documents and it gives interest. They want the detail of the interest that was paid and obviously the proof of the highest interest. So you can see that is how they're starting to question those business expenses. So as soon as you put in business expenses there, they're going to start digging around to see whether those expenses are supposed to be there and then they're going to add it back. Let's have a look at another one over here. <clears throat> so this one over here, you can see now they're asking, give us a schedule of all the salaries that was paid. The supporting documents for all accounting fees, the schedule of rental of equipment, the so supporting documentation and schedule of rental of equipment. So there, once again, it's somebody we submitted the expenses for, and now they start coming back and say, okay, give us the proof of those expenses so they can start disallowing those expenses to, to increase the taxable profit. This is the one that we looked at just now as well. You can see it's another one where they were actually had queries on fuel. So they're asking for the annual financial statements, they want the trial balance, what type of fuel the engines run on, the type of accounting system that is used, monthly diesel purchases, and confirmation whether you employ any contractors or subcontractors who might be using some of your fuel. So this was also a very interesting case. So what can you do? Because we can see from what I've said just now that I really believe that small business is going to be a soft target. The reason is because they don't have a full-time accountant on board that can monitor the expenses as you incur them. And that is an easy, easy place where SARS can easily um, gain a lot of extra income from. So the first thing is you need to make sure that you keep proper records. In the next video I'm going to be doing, um, in this video we'll be talking about the why. In the next video I'm going to be talking to you about the how, how to actually keep records for small business. The second thing is forward risk indicators. So there's two main things that the receiver of revenue or any auditor looks like, looks at, which they classify as a forward risk indicators. So the first one is if you work with a lot of cash, for them that's a sign that something funny might be happening in the books because they know people are scaly, they will go to their neighbors and their friends and stuff and say, listen, give me all your fuel slips so I can put it through my business's business expenses. So that's the problem with cash is, is if you go and draw money every single day, you can't really prove what you did with the money and that is where the risk comes with that. So you need to try and stay away from cash as far as possible. The next thing that I said over there is a separation of business and private expenses. A lot of small businesses, when they start their companies, the people think that they are the company, so they would take that business card and they would just swipe left, right and center and use that account as a personal account and that is really really dangerous because now SARS gets a list of your bank statement and they say all these entries over here and then they say that the risk is there that the chances are good that you're going to try and you um, put through personal expenses as business expenses so you need to separate your personal from your business so the business account must only be for, for business expenses your personal account must only be for personal expenses don't mix them up Otherwise, if they start asking for proof or ask for the bank statements and they see all these funny transactions in there, then you're going to be in big, big trouble. And um, so next point over there as well, I said that you need to have a good accountant on board. So you need to have an accountant. I think the days where you send your information through accountant once a year, I think those days are gone because especially with, with what Sasha is busy doing now, you need to make sure that you have a good accountant on board that can review your files and stuff on a regular basis. You need to have somebody that you can phone to make sure that you stay compliant with all your stuff. And um, yeah, so I think that is really critical. And um, that is the reason why I think that small businesses must make sure that they keep proper records in the next few years. If you got any value out of the video, remember to share it with your friends as well. Um, remember once again to subscribe to my channel and like the video. And the next video that I'll be doing is the how-to of record keeping for small businesses. Thanks for watching.